fading out again. Hey, they're, they're hitting my line, so I can't. Nope. That's okay. Just keep trying. So your you went your grandmother at, at the funeral said what to you? Um, my um aunt had disclosed the fact to me that um my grandmother had her body temperature right before she died had climbed up over 108 okay. degrees, and they had superheated her to death. So um, I had a a cousin that the same thing had happened to. So now I'm putting all these parts of the puzzle together and I'm finding out that the way that microwave um, frequencies work is that they will superheat the body until your kidneys and major organs give out. Um, you, if there's any questions on how it affects you biologically, you can visit a website, um, Organize Time Waves com and on there you can you can you can click on my name it says Jimmy Walbert on it and you can click on it and it'll give you a full scale of a you know ID on the microwave superheating the viral effects of electromagnetics being introduced to our bodies. What's the what's that again, James? Bio effects of microwave energy and radio frequency deployment onto our bodies. Uh, the name of the website is um, www.organizedcrimewaves.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. And on there is my name. You can, it says Jimmy Walbert. You can click on it, and it gives you a full spectrum of how the uh, electromagnetics will affect us biologically. It will throw our hormonal balances off, giving us... Um, the appearance of being stressed out, giving us um, the appearance of being on edge all the time. These weapons are strategically designed to do these things. Um, the type of frequencies that are being deployed to our, as well as to our, our physical bodies, these weapons are, um, well, the immobilization of our bodies, as well as neuro synapse disruption, disruption, respiratory disruption, and glandular disruption also. So these are, there are secretions in the body that are, you know, very important to have and need to be able to... Um, You're going on again, James. James. There are secretions that are very important to the body and what? Um, and these weapons are designed to um, create deficiencies so that we will be easily stressed out, we will appear to be um, agitated, things like that. They are designed to paralyze us. That, that's what the United States Air Force have a contract with the United States Air Force and the University of Rio, Nevada, where they had done some testings. And that's what the weapons were designed to do, were to immobilize us as well as make us appear to be stressed out or very aggravated. And if those are the, the happenings of my harassment. My, my harassment hasn't stopped. I mean, I'm a vigorous, you know, activist against this. I'm in contact with congressional members every single day. I'm in contact with state representatives nationwide every single day. Radio stations, everywhere I can go, media, every single thing that I can do, the whole base motive for my harassment as well as any type of threat or anything that pertains to my harassment is for the gain of, and profit of an invention that I have made. So. Okay, James. Uh, thank you. And I'll, I'll follow up with each of you a little bit later on your own individually. Next, we're going to have Holly from Long Island, New York. Hi, this is Holly from Long Island, New York. I'd like to approach this with a different uh, viewpoint. It's called um, um, Voice to Skull um, Microwave Capacity RF. I'm not sure what the frequency is but it has to do with offensive microwave weapons. And when I was working for Al Gore, and it's when he was running for president, he is the man who said the, by Harlan that uh, uh, 
he made public uh, the uh, Congressional Clearinghouse on the Future in 1982. It's a prominent man by the name of Al Gore. He uh, held uh, high-level discussions in government on offensive microwave weapons and mind control mechanisms. While I was working for him, I was coming home and I was not being able to sleep at night. I was, I have lost an exorbitant amount of weight. I went from 252 pounds to 142 right now. Um, I've had horrific dreams in color. Um, dreams that would be undescribable uh, as a viewer in a uh, car of people being shot with Uzis and with guns and with other weapons just blown away in a car as I was uh, watching this. It was a dream in color. Um, what they were doing, I don't know. All I know is I woke up horrifically scared. I refused to walk in front of my windows. I was afraid I was going to be shot with a weapon of choice by whomever it was that did this to me. Um, I have proceeded in my life to be a guinea pig for a research department at a psychiatric clinic. I was um, medicated and, and had side effects and told the doctor of the side effects and they proceeded to increase my dosage and I could was bed bound, I could not walk. I fell to the floor and hit my head against the wall. I couldn't function and the doctor who had me in the psychiatric board never signed her name to anything including the CAT scan, splicing, the uh, EEG, which I repelled, and um, with the strobes, I kept thinking of names and such and such, and I had found myself um, hearing voices. I started about 15, 20 years ago, a voice-to-skull communication. I call it the intelligentsia. I don't know who it is. All I know is that I'm a product of it, and it's very frightening. I have had things missing from my home. My home has been invaded. I've, I've had things taken from my house, physically taken. My father was in the service. His Geneva Convention card was taken. His military records were taken. I've had books on schizophrenia taken. I've had all sorts of things taken from my home. And this is different homes from different places that I've lived on Long Island. I've had many things taken, pictures of newspaper articles from when I was in the fourth grade. Pictures of my father with my two teachers were gone. Um, things that uh, treasures that I had were gone. Things were missing. They invaded my home, whomever they were. I've been actually brought to my knees. Um, I, the other day, I was immobile. I was at college. I became immobile. I sat on the bench. I couldn't move. I just sat there and sat there and sat there. I was totally immobile. I felt weak. I had palpitations. I had the sort of sweating. I don't know what was going on. All I know is that periodically helicopters fly over my house, and I know they have thermal imaging devices, and I know that they that they uh, are viewing me through the roof of my house. I can feel it. I know it. And it's very perplexing. I'm not very happy about this because it's constant and ever constant and it's been going on for many, many years. And I have found myself, I'll give you an example of something that happened. I'm a savant. 
I invented